And the big question, though, is it still too little, too late? Our partners on the ground are rooting ISIL out town by town, neighborhood by neighborhood, block by block. We're also taking out ISIL leaders, commanders, and killers one by one. Every day, we destroy as well more of ISIL's forces. Their fighting positions, bunkers, and staging areas, their heavy weapons, bomb making factories, compounds, and training camps. Well, that was President Obama touting military gains, all those successes against ISIS. But then once again, uh, the president failed to offer any new tactics. Our strategy is moving forward with a great sense of urgency on four fronts. Hunting down and taking out these terrorists, training and equipping Iraqi and Syrian forces to fight ISIL on the ground, stopping ISIL's operations by disrupting the recruiting, financing and propaganda, and finally, persistent diplomacy to end the Syrian civil war so that everyone can focus on destroying ISIL. Joining me now, Carl Higby, former U.S. Navy SEAL, Steve Rogers, former military intel officer for the FBI, and Tammy Bruce, Fox News political contributor. Hey, Carl, I'll start with you. Okay, you got four things, right? We're hunting down these guys. We're going to train some more. Of course, we spent like $400 million. I don't know what we got for. Not even a lousy T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, kill the recruiting efforts or funding efforts, and then somehow diplomatically tie this whole thing up with a diplomatic bow in Syria, and we all live happily ever after. Fix global warming, it'll solve it. <laughs> no, he has literally hasn't done any of that. And, and you know, we, we've hunted down a, a few leaders, but they just backfill them. So, I mean, the, the, the thing is, training these troops, we've been doing it for over a decade, and there's been no mark. There's been no progress. We left that country to the people we trained. Look where it is now. You know, here's the thing, Steve. First of all, I love when we kill these guys, these leaders, not only because they're evil, but I hate having to learn their names, right? <laughs> it's like, I'm not good with pronunciations. Yeah. I'm good with Steve and Jim's. But, uh, uh, you know, the president, I know he knew, he, everyone knows he fell flat on his face uh, the last time he addressed the American public on this. He looked awful. He sounded awful. He tried to sound a little bit stronger today, but no changes in the policy. I mean, he's still living in this echo chamber where only he and a few sickle fans think that we're winning. Look, if he tried to sound stronger today, he sounded weaker. We still have no strategy. We still have ISIS containing us, limiting us. He announces uh, that we're not sending ground troops in. He announces that he sends 50 people in. Uh, he's announcing to the enemy how they can beat us. And unfortunately, they're the ones who have executed a success successful operation on U.S. soil. And you know what the response should have been? And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, overwhelming force, strategic bombing of the oil fields, command and control centers, supply lines, and their headquarters. You know who's doing that, Charles? Russia, France, and now Germany. You know, and Tammy, it's interesting. The president talked about his, uh, his sort of uh, cautious uh, approach to bombing. So he tried to say, listen, we want to have surgical precision. You know, we want to make sure that we blow up a building, only kill the bad guys, and if two or three good guys are in there, they live. Like, that's how pre precise <laughs> his, his plan is. Yeah, this was uh, like olive oil trying to tell us she was Popeye. You know, everyone's thinking this, is, this can't work. He said we're going to do it one by one, and then he went through a little bit of a list. At this rate, it's going to take 500 years. This has to be dealt with, as you've said, in a, in a big way. We also know that there was not only no new news when it came to how we're going to fight it in the Middle East, no plan for the homeland. Nothing at all here uh, at home. When we see France arresting hundreds, having a thousand raids at least, closing down mosques, Americans look and wonder, what are we going to do here? I think we're getting a new grid of, of, of warnings, like with new colors or something. That's the main homeland thing they're giving us. So the American people were here. This is what's so strange even about doing this today. There wasn't anything new. There was no, no reason I think, to do this. I think this. he felt that. They, he fell so flat on his face. Even, even even those around him said, you know, we got to kind of tell you, you got to go back out and try this thing again. Well, but that was the point, reason he did the Oval Office uh, thing in the first right, place. But it didn't, it didn't work failed. then, it didn't work today. But Carl, I want to ask you, if, uh, as a Navy SEAL, we've got 50 or so s special forces on the ground looking for partners. I mean, right. really, like they've got an empty dance car bumping around the, the desert looking for someone to train. Absolutely. Well, we have to understand the sooner the West gets over the fact that Islam is a political ideology as much as it is a religion. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand, too, that their goal has been the caliphate since, oh, I don't know, 700 A.D. You think 50 special forces are going to train that? No. You're going to have to create mass devastation, and it's not going to be done mm -hmm. by, you know, leaving one or two bad guys left in a building. But you know, it's, it's going to be the big time. And, to and there's another life. factor that no one's talking about, what we'll be talking about soon. We go in, we take ISIS out, I'm sure we can do that. What are we going to do when we come face to face with the Russian military? What on earth are we going to do? And as you yeah. said, Tammy, there is no plan. 
There's no exit strategy, and there's no plan to deal with the Russians. They are there to stay. Especially when they start drilling for the oil Al there. Although I got to tell you something, it felt like to a certain degree uh, when, the, when the president talked about a, a diplomatic solution to the Syrian civil war, uh, that he may be coming around a little bit to Putin's way of thinking that, uh, you know, maybe Assad, maybe Assad going or staying isn't something that he's, he's necessarily dug in on as much as before. Let me uh, mention that I think just yesterday a, a, a fellow in the Russian military noted that they were thinking about how problematic the borders were for both Iraq and Syria and even Lebanon, they mentioned. In a column that I did on October 10th, I said, watch out for this sectioning off of Iraq for Iran and for Syria. So they're starting to mention that. Here's what I think. We should just blast them to hell uh, for the next year, leave the diplomacy and the reconstruction for the next president, who will note uh, Putin, whom Putin will be afraid of, because it's not going to be Hillary, and be able to then leave the, the important work then Blast uh, the hell to, out to of who, though? One. ISIS only, uh, uh, ISIS and the Syrian rebels are just blast everyone. Uh, I, I, you know, when I, I was in the military, Steve, you probably remember the T-shirts. They used to have a T-shirt uh, with an atomic uh, nuclear bomb going off, right. and, and it's right. like, you know, nuke them all and let God sort them out. Yeah. I mean, uh, it feels like that's the strategy Russia is taking. I don't know if we're going to do this. We can't thing. fight a sanitized war. And, uh, Chris, I know, you, you know, being a military guy, could you imagine doing targeting and your targeting suggestions go to attorneys first? Yeah. Because we don't want to offend this person or that per person. We need George Patton. We need Douglas MacArthur. We need a Churchill. We need strong. Well, the Germans and, and the fighters. Japanese did not. We did not beat them because of diplomacy. We beat them because they, they they did not survive this, and it yep. was culturally and otherwise. And you know, everybody should have us as as their uh, sure. uh, vanquisher. Right. But at this point, we know how to do it, and we need to start implementing what we know and how and to. We do. don't want to see, and I'm sure you guys agree. We don't want to see innocent people killed. Right. I mean, it's a Absolutely but. Not. But. I don't want Americans to die either. If you're in Raqqa right now, you're either part of the problem or you're already dead. That's right. right. Pound that place into a parking lot, bring in the biggest rig we got. I and saw the a picture of a shop in Raqqa that was selling Michael Kors handbags and like Kristen Louboutin shoes. And I, I, I mean, I, I'm like, oh, what the heck? I thought we bombed the smithereens out of it. I mean, it just goes to show you that we're, we're, we have not crushed this place. Well, we and this is the absurdity it. of saying that we, we don't want collateral damage. We don't. However, there's plenty of collateral damage in, in Paris and in San Bernardino. So we can stop this now. We talk about the moral high ground. Stop it now. Otherwise, it will go on for years with thousands of people, innocents dying. Remember what we That's said last we time? End. The maps that we saw in, the, in, a, in a World War II where the Nazis were marching, marching, marching until they came to the shores of England. Then it was the massive, overwhelming bombing uh, that stopped them. And we're going to come to that soon, I believe. War is not politically correct. It's dangerous. It's hell. If you want to win the war, start killing bad guys. All right, guys, I've got some breaking news for you also. Sergeant Bo Bergdahl, he's actually been referred to trial by a court-martial. Now, of course, you remember he's charged with desertion and misbehavior before the enemy and could actually face life in prison. Uh, Bergdahl spent five years as a captive under the Taliban. He was released last year in exchange for five Taliban detainees who were Gitmo. His arraignment date has not yet been set. Carl, I got to say, I mean, I wish the charges were even more than that, but as someone who's fought, who understands what's at stake, uh, most, most military people consider him a deserter. Yeah, literally every single person that knew this guy that was deployed with him, that it, it, were in his unit, said, this guy's a turd. He's a deserter. He left us. Okay, he wanted to be part of, you said captive, allegedly captive. He may actually have been, you know, part of the Taliban at that point. I, I think that they need to prosecute this to the fullest, fullest extent. Did you hear what he said last week about thinking he was some sort of Jason Bourne? I mean, maybe this guy's <laughs> nuts. I mean, I, but he is a deserter. And the deal that President Obama cut for him, I think, was probably one of the low, low points of the, Five for uh, one? The, yeah, the administration. You, you know, George Patton would have done more than slap him in the face. Believe me, Charles. The fact of the matter is he is a deserter, and it has demoralized the entire U.S. military, especially those who are out there fighting for But are you guys surprised, at least, though, that, uh, that this is heading toward a, uh, you know, a court martial yep. and that perhaps he'll get life in prison? I thought, honestly, I thought the Fitz was in and he would skip all of this. I think I, it got too much media. I think yeah, they had to. Well, well uh, I'm very very disappointed in our military command structure. I mean, you know, I, you got to obey the president of the United States, and I would never suggest. Well, could they, they have pushed back any harder than this? I mean, well, we, we, he's up for a court martial. I, you know, everyone's hoping he gets life. He should be in front of a firing squad. Well, how about the U.S. Congress? They're our representatives. They should be raising hell over uh, this. Look, uh, this quiet. guy's also been walking around. He's been working. He's been. Yeah. Uh, this is a deserter, a man who is being charged with putting his unit in danger. Uh, this, his his lawyers wanted it reduced down to a misdemeanor and like some kind of summary judgment. 
I'm sure that they wanted that, but there was the evidence was probably so overwhelming they couldn't do it. It's that simple. Talk about morale uh, with something like this. Uh, I know morale's got to be low. Uh, you, we send men and women out there to fight with no no real chance of winning. Right. which to me is the most despicable thing in the world you can do. If we're going to send them out in the harm's way, at least tell them, listen, we want you to win. But this guy, had his parents were at the White House. Mm. The president cut this amazing deal for him. Everyone, there was enough intelligence within the, in, in, in the, for, for the White House to know, listen, this guy is not kosher. We shouldn't be doing this. How many people died getting the five terrorists that were released? How many people died? We know that people died when uh, they were trying to rescue him. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, this is spitting on their graves right now. Burn this guy at the stake. And you know, Charles, the president wants a legacy. He has one. The worst president in at least in my lifetime. He's divided this country. He's divided the races. He's got the police against the people, people against the police. And now he's demoralized the military. What more damage can you We're do? We're going to be amazed to look back at what we went through and also the lessons that have to be learned. And people like us are going to have to continue to have this discussion because there are lessons to be learned so this doesn't happen again. One person, the wrong person in the White House, will change everything. Yeah. Yep. It's going to take a while to fix it, too. Hey, the FBI completed their extensive search of that lake in San Bernardino. Uh, they believe it was a dumping point for that married shooter, the married shooter, Syed Farouk and, and Tashfin Malik. Uh, did the terrorists, though, did they find anything? We're going to talk about what might be there. And also, we got to talk about that buddy, Enrique Marquez, because he can still be a central figure to figuring this all out. Rip, cleaning toilets, maybe hauling ice. But every now and then he takes a break and says, man, life is tough, you know, but I know there's all kinds of sleeper cells. I mean, you know, we should start paying attention to that. Maybe, well, maybe in the past we all would have written that off. Well, I'm going to say something right now. I know Eric's going to get jumpy on me. You know what? We got, I'm sorry. We got to start profiling. We got to start profiling when people act like a terrorist when people start growing that facial hair and start growing that facial hair around their chin and because we know for one thing with well, this that's criminal profile that's on not a second. racial profiling well, so no. that's not that's nothing wrong with that oh there's nothing wrong with nothing wrong with what you just said profiling with that type okay. of profiling, there's criminal profiling saying. and there's racial and when profiling. People acting, racial profiling. When people are acting in their garage at 3 o'clock in the morning, you see Middle East-looking guys walking in and out at 3 o'clock in the morning. Now, you, you can't – hold on. Now, oh, you can't on. just say Middle Eastern guys. Now, that's that's inappropriate. Well, why? That, because, that is racially well, profiling. But why, but why is it Middle well, Eastern? Well, what do you think well, they look like? They grow the facial hair. And I mean, you know for the, yourself, the ISIS guys cannot shave the beard if no, they start that, – Now, that – If they're I, radicalizing – That type of profile is if they're radicalizing? But if you see something wrong, you do need to report well, it. Well, why can't but I knock on the garage door and say, excuse me, this is Detective Bo. What are you doing in there, baby? Well, what's, what's wrong with that? Is, it, people do need to make sure that we call authorities if we see something weird. But as far as racial profiling, that's inappropriate. That's not racial. Criminal pro Criminal. Yes, it is. You mentioned them being Muslim, so no, that is no, racial no, profile. I, I that race. threw in the racial. Well, hold on one second, racial Eric. If, if they're Muslim and you're nervous and you live near them, you don't want to say anything. But then all of a sudden, you do start hearing racket at three in the morning. Packages are being delivered all the time. Uh, you know, something isn't right. Something is odd. When can you say something without being in trouble yourself? Right. Well, you can always say something without being in trouble yourself. Now that is a, that. So is then, a fact. so then, but, I think. Let me ask you, Steve. I would, at this stage of the game, then, it would be better to run the risk of being called a racist rather than let someone build 30 pipe bombs and, yes. and, and amass 70,000 bullets uh, to go to war with our neighborhood. Yeah, but, but the point is this. You know, you know who lives in your neighborhood when, and when you see something out of the ordinary. You know, we've been conditioned from the White House down, if you see something, say nothing. And to Eric's point, if you see something that just isn't right, you could call any time, and it's done a what lot. What did the White House say? Yeah, but we say something. Something. The White House did not say, oh, Eric, see look, something, the political say nothing. Correct. Correct. That's That's not right. The White House has conditioned right. the American people because of political correctness Muslim, to no say good. Right. So nothing. you're saying the White House has caused all this? Well, I think, I think Eric, Eric, what a lot of people are saying, though, like take, for instance, the clock boy. The yeah. clock boy comes in, he's got a, this clock with wires, and the school is afraid. Next right. thing I know, he's the at the White House. But next thing you know, he's at the White House. He's at the White House. He's at the White House. The school was not afraid. Eric, they did on. not evacuate the school. If they thought that that was an actual bomb, they would have evacuated the school. Eric, one at a time. Eric, Eric, if I may, 
I'm going to let you know something. What happened in France, in Paris, all of a sudden, once it happens, all this political correctness is going to go out the window, and it all is going to happen. There'll be no warrant. When I go into his garage, I'm going to be able to go into that garage and find those pipe bombs. Because there's when, a lot of stuff going on. And but, but, when did the president of the United States ever come to the defense of the police? No. I am yet to see that. Only that, is, that is not, that is not true. Police are always he has spoken of, no, that is not true. Yeah. He has come to the defense of police. You can't, really? you can't sit really? there. Actually, where, that and where, be honest right? about it. And it's that is not true. We have too much, that is not, we have too much well, political one, correctness. I just want to ask you, Bo. So yeah. are you saying that we're on, the, we're on the path right now to some form of martial law? Right now, we have too much political correctness against Muslims for some reason. More so than anything, when the president has his attorney general comes out and said, we're going to make it a crime. It should be a crime against everyone. Why signal out against Muslims? If you do something wrong against anyone, it should be. Why should we Eric, be so we're, we're, they, were, they were talking about that because Muslims were getting a lot of grunt of uh, racist epithets. They were being, oh, they on. had pigs thrown at their mosque. Oh, their mosque which thing. is wrong. Which is Mosque wrong. Being burned. And we that's what we're speaking but, of. But, but I, that's why it was important for the attorney general to come out and say that because the rhetoric whoa. has caused people to say different but Eric, things. I agree, but should the attorney general everyone. also come out and say, you know what, the NSA needs the capability right. and the ability as exactly. well as local police to do their job. The data mining, as we know, could put an end to all of this discussion. It would be, a, it'd be one hell of a tool. Guys, we got to yeah. leave it right there. We do have